As you know, we just bought a 23-foot Airstream we named Reynold. And we still have Sparky, our 30-footer. And while they're here together, before Sparky sells, hopefully soon, we want to do a comparison video and show you the difference between the two. Everything about the 23 is tinier. This one is an international special edition, so it's got the awnings all around, which is pretty cool. Actually does help cut down on the heat, whereas this one just has the one awning. But you can get awnings installed at the Airstream factory, but plan on spending two to three thousand to get the full awning package. Also, the 23 footer measures in at 23 feet exactly from the ball to the bumper. The 30 footer measures 31 feet from the ball to the bumper. So this is eight feet shorter than Sparky, which is very significant when it's your full time house. Also, the 23 is six inches narrower. The whole body and shell is narrower. So it's a little bit more compact when towing, a little bit more compact when getting it into your little spot, but you feel that when you're inside, it's definitely smaller. Let's take a look inside. There's a bunch of little things that didn't make it into the 23 footer that did make it into the 30 footer, like the outside scare light. I really like that light when we're playing cards out here or something. You can turn it on, get a little more light outside in your yard. We do have the over door light though, but even just looking at it, there's so few, so much fewer windows. Just in the main living space here, it's very different. It's a lot smaller. The sink protrudes out, which I really don't love. It gives you a lot of storage under here, but it doesn't, it kind of clutters up the room here. I would love it if that was just cut off and straight like the 30 footer, maybe one day. We also don't have the storage cabinets here that we have in the 30 footer. Instead, we have the Vista View windows, but that's a ton of storage loss. That's where we used to keep our dry food. Also, since this is an international, it's got the sliding doors instead of the flip up doors. And unfortunately, I think I actually prefer the flip up doors. These look cool and you can, let's see, turn on the light in there. Looks really neat. But uh, for practicality, I think I like the flying cloud doors a little more because you there's not a big lip here and you can reach in there better. Same thing up here with the over kitchen storage. Like there's probably six inches to the left there that's really hard to get to. You can still store it in there, but it's hard to access. So this is our desk and our eating table. It folds down and you can put the cushions out to cover it all to make a bed there. This is our couch. It pulls out as well, and then the cushions slide out and we can sleep two people there. It'll be tight, but it's doable. Um, and the only storage we've got up here is above here. We've got a little drawer here, and a little cubby here. That's it up front. Here's the kitchen, way smaller than the 30 footer, a lot less prep, cooking prep area, but we're gonna be using this a lot as a cutting board and food prep. Um, it's also got an oven, which we're super excited about. A little gas oven, which is great for boondocking. We have a convection microwave oven in the 30 footer, and while we can run that a little bit off our lithium batteries, it drains quite a bit to run it as an oven. The fridge is quite different too. This fridge only has two buttons, on or off, or gas, or auto. What that means is it either runs off electricity, or I can force it onto gas. Also, there's no separate dedicated fridge. It's just a com combination here, a little ice box there, and a much smaller fridge area. We're gonna be feeling that big time. Up here's the microwave. It is not a convection oven, it's just a regular microwave. One day, we'll probably rip that out, rip this out, and put in a full-size fridge and freezer. I'm not even sure if that's possible. I've never seen anyone that's done it. But where there's a will, there's a way. And there's lots of custom outfitters out there that are willing to do that sort of thing for you. But we would use a full-size fridge more than we would use that microwave. Another thing that's missing from the 30-footer is the 30-footer had like a little 3-inch shelf here where we could the TV would recess into it. We use that a lot to route our ham radio, to route our Wi-Fi, our 4G booster, to route some of our chargers and stuff. And we don't have that here, it just comes straight out of the wall. So that we're gonna be missing. One cool thing is the pantry. It's a lot wider than in the 30 footer. 
not bad. And these cabinets open up and they're totally empty. They are almost big enough to fit the lithium batteries. I'm going to do my very best to get them in there. We will see. <coughs> Moving on to the closet. This is my closet. All of my clothes and shoes have to fit in there. That's a big difference. Here's Teresa's closet. Even smaller. She volunteered for that one. We've got the partition here to close it off. Bathroom is way tinier, but we like that. When we were looking at our 30 footer, we were saying, what is the area we use the least? The shower. What's the area we use the second least? The bathroom area. And the third least is the bed. And in the 30 footer, those take up over half of the trailer. So we thought if, if we could condense those, we could get away with a smaller trailer. In the 23 footer, we've got a much smaller bathroom area. I actually dig it that it's not in its own little space with the door to open. You can just wash your, brush your teeth here, prep, get ready right here in the main living area. Here's the bathroom. It's small, but like I said, it's not like we're hanging out in here for hours at a time. So we've got our little toilet here. This one's aftermarket. I think it's a little bit shorter. A lot of people hate this toilet, especially tall people, because they get in here and their knee hits the door when they're trying to use the toilet. I like to think of this as a built-in squatty potty right there. That little shelf there. That shelf is actually the black tank right under there. And then the corner shower, pretty straightforward. Haven't used it yet, but it's, it's fine in size. And I think it makes a lot of sense to combine these two areas into one. In fact, we used to hate wet baths, but now I think we could totally do a wet bath and it makes a lot of sense to save space by putting them together. Because we don't have as much storage in the bedroom, we're going to use the shower as storage for like our hampers and towels and stuff like that. So we'll be able to store some of that stuff there. Here in the, <laughs> the tiny, tiny bedroom, this bed's even smaller than our other one. And we're small people. Teresa's 5'4", I'm 5'6", and we barely fit on here. But we like it. We like sleeping together. We like being cozy together. Most people won't, but we really dig that. Instead of the big overhead locker from the 30, we've got this small overhead locker that has a lot of wasted space in here, probably to make room for the speaker. Uh, same thing over here. It's just not very big, and it's kind of hard to get to because you have to lean on the bed to reach stuff in there. We still don't know where everything's gonna go, but we sure lose a lot of space there. And we don't have the corner storage that we had in the 30, which was really nice. Another bummer about the 23 footer is this bed doesn't lift up because of the contours. You can't lift it up and access the stuff underneath. Instead, it's got one cabinet there, which is quite large, but that's it for under bed storage. I think there's also some under, some wasted space in there as well. We've got a water heater and a water tank and another storage cabinet that I'll show you later. And then in the bedroom we have this super high-tech Sony TV. But we don't watch TV. We watch a little bit of Netflix when we're trying to wind down so we're probably going to remove this and put a smart TV in there. One thing we love about this 23 footer is when you come in it feels like one giant room. There's no narrow hallway that kind of pinches it off. The 30 footer kind of feels like two rooms, a living room in the front and kitchen and the bedroom in the back, which some people will love, but we really like the open feel in here and how it all kind of feels like one. It's tiny though, and it's gonna be hard to fit all of our stuff in here, but we're gonna find a way to make it work and you're gonna to get to watch our struggles as we do so or our triumphs. We're really excited to test out the 23 footer and see what it affords us and being able to park in people's driveways a little bit better, get into some tighter camping spots and be a little bit less to tow, which could be nice. Anyway, it's a big change between the two, mostly storage capacity. I'm not worried about sharing the bathroom and the bed in the same area. I'm not worried about the ba tiny bathroom and shower. I actually prefer that and I like this front open area. Modifications we'd love to do one day. I'd love to chop this off, put a normal sink in here that's rectangular, more recessed. Um, then I'd just have an open, more open feel. 
We need to put a desk in somewhere. Dinettes are awful for me to work on. I just do not like them. I'm tired after an hour working on it. And it's kind of rattly. It's not like it's super solid on there. Um, but we love the Ocean Breeze motif. We waited and waited and waited to find one that was an Ocean Breeze. They're hard to find, especially clean, and the previous owners took great care of this. We're gonna be putting solar on. We're gonna be putting our batteries in and our big inverter eventually. We won't be able to fit as much solar, and we may not even be able to fit all our batteries in here. It's gonna be an interesting experiment. Anyway, there's no perfect Airstream for everybody. And so we're here to share our experience with you going from one of the biggest, the 30-footer, to one of the smallest that we can comfortably live in, the 23-footer. If we weren't working full-time and sitting at a desk for eight hours a day, we could probably go even smaller, but that's a big part of our life right now, and we need to earn an income to save for retirement. And this is about, we're stretching it to go this, this small, but we're really excited to make it happen. In the back, both of them have the same bumper storage, but it's a little wider on the 30 foot because it's the wider body. And then out here, this is our only storage port to the outside. It's pretty big inside, but it's a small door, so we can't even fit our ladder in there, so we don't know how we're gonna do that. We'll probably have to put it in the van. So that's another condition of downsizing. Here on Sparky, our 30-footer, we have a huge access hatch with a ton of room. Easily fit the ladder in there. Easy to get things in and out, and it, it accesses from under the bed as well. And here's the 30-footer. Here's the front area. We love and prefer the front couch layout to the dinette. So much open room. You got a little magazine rack. It's just big in here. Teresa's cut hair in here. We've had like six people in here playing cards. Really big front lounge area. Man, seeing this is making me think we're crazy for going small. We have a huge counter in here. Big old sink with a cutting board on top or a cover. Just a big prep space, and I like that the bump doesn't come out and cut into the walkway. I really like that. A lot of storage up here. We've got double the storage that our other one had. And the desk is huge with two great windows on it. This is really nice, this recessed pocket here. I would love to add something like this on the 23-footer. We can fit all sorts of stuff in there. Phone chargers, 4G boosters, all sorts of stuff like that. And we've got the cabinets up here. Our 23 has these Vista View windows there instead. And to be honest, we almost always keep those closed to keep it cool in here. And I'd rather have the cabinets if possible. It'd probably make the 23 feel even more cramped, but that's very useful space to us. Another interesting thing is these cabinets are lower in the... It feels lower in the flying cloud and it's flat all the way up to here and the bottom's flat. In the internationals it's curved and so you can't use the first three or four inches so you're always reaching far back. Kind of interesting. Enormous fridge and freezer. It didn't feel enormous when we lived in it but it sure does now. Slide out pantry. This I don't like as much. I prefer the pantry on the 23. But I do love all that storage there. But we will use a gas oven more than we will use the convection oven. Another funky little storage spot we would use as a pantry. But it's so deep it was kind of hard to reach stuff. The 30 is big enough to have two dividers. So this one comes off and divides the front half. So the people in the back can use the bed and the bathroom and the shower. And then it's got another divider here. So you can divide it there so the front people can use the front area and the bathroom and the shower with a little bit of privacy. Enormous closet. It didn't feel big at the time, but it sure does now. Separate shower. We spend the least amount of time in the shower than any other part of the Airstream. So that was one area we thought we could combine with our second least used area, which is the bathroom. But this is a nice bathroom. You can sit and use the toilet without your knees hitting the door or anything like the 23. But it is a lot of valuable 
floor space. So if you're not towing it a lot and you're staying in one place, this will be way more comfortable. And to be honest, the 30 doesn't tow hardly any different than the 23, except for when it's windy. That's when you feel the difference. It's really interesting that this has like a hallway. It feels like three or four separate rooms. You got your front room, your office and kitchen prep, a hallway, and then in here you have the bedroom. And the bedroom is huge. It's a true walk around bed. At first we thought we wanted windows all the way around like the front beds have. But the more we've lived in this, the more we realize we prefer fewer windows in our bedroom. Because that's where all the heat and cold go. Like when it's in the winter time, the windows are really cold. And having a lot of windows would be way less insulated than this. We also love the storage over here. So much storage there. And all these doors come off. So I would usually just leave the doors off. Also huge storage under the bed. That's accessible from the rear as well. Huge storage up there. And we really like A, having outlets right here that we can plug our phones in and charge them at night. And B, the little cutouts for books to set your phone there, set your tablet there. We don't have that in the 23 and we are gonna miss that. There's also heat ducted throughout on both sides of the 30 footer, which is pretty nice. Well, that's the 30 footer. There is a huge difference between the two, especially if you go from one to the other. You hop in here and you're like, this is huge in a good way. You hop in the 23 and you're like, this is cozy. It's cute and small, but it's cozy. But I think we're gonna make it work for us. It's gonna be a big change and uh, we're excited to show you the differences and let you know how we like the 23. Probably the biggest change of all of them is the tank size. We have over double the fresh, double the gray, and double the black in here, which means we could stay two, sometimes even into three weeks boondocking. That's not gonna happen in the 23, so we're gonna have to get creative, but we'll show you how we do it and let you know if we think it was worth it or not. But once again, we never could have started in the 23. It's way too small and we couldn't have downsized all our stuff. So the 30 was perfect for us to live in, to work in. You know, spending eight hours a day in here working, a huge desk in this room just, it feels nice. It, we never felt like we were in a tiny cramped area. We'll see how that is with the 23, if we're stepping on each other's toes or if it's the perfect blend of space with the corner bed, bathroom and shower out of the way, and just kind of a bigger front end. We'll see how it plays out. There's no perfect Airstream that's perfect in every way that's one model that everyone should have. Depending on your needs, a 30-footer might be the perfect one, or maybe a 16-foot Bambi is the perfect one for you. It's important to go through them all, imagine yourself in that space, and be honest with yourself and say, how much stuff do I have, and how much room do I have, and how much time am I going to be spending in the trailer? I personally feel like if you're going to get a 27 or a 28 or a 30, you might as well get the 30 because I like the layout way more. It feels way more open. And an extra two or three feet towing, you are not going to notice a difference. And I'd be surprised if there are very many spots that a 27 can get into that a 30 can't. The weight's now different realistically. You're not going to feel it towing. And so we so that's why we sprung for the 30. If you're going to go small, like the 19 and the 23s, we really like those. But I don't think I could make a 19 work full time if I was still working. Anyway, there are so many great Airstreams out there. I encourage you to go to your dealer, step inside as many as you can, envision yourself there, try walking around the bed and decide if you could make that, decide if the bathroom works for you or not. Um, but, but one thing that we really changed in the past year is thinking we needed a separate bathroom and shower. And to be honest, we'd be okay with a wet bath now because that is just the least important space to us in a trailer. That's it for the comparison. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to see how we get on with the 23-footer.